Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to talk about the fact that can you do research without the PhD degree? And this is a question which has been raised by one of the viewers of the channel. Now, of course, you know that throughout history, people were always doing research and most of these people did not have PhD degrees because the PhD was not there yet. So in fact, if you read any physics book, any chemistry books and so on, you will find that the people who were doing researchers or rather who were researchers long ago, these people were often simply people who were doing the research in their home. Maybe they were lords or parents in some place. Sometimes they were priests, sometimes they were clergy, sometimes they were pandits and so on. So what happened is that with the formalization of the research process, the PhD became more important. But even today, if you see most of the people who are doing research, you will see that they often do not have PhD degrees. It is not just in the industry, but also in the national labs, in various companies and so on. So let's discuss some of these aspects today. So I'm going to discuss four aspects in this video, and then you are going to have a good idea about the different type of research you can do without having a PhD. So the number one thing is patents. And you of course know that PhD type of people try to spend most of the time writing papers in journals and conferences. But if you see the industry out there, it doesn't bother a whole lot in writing paper. What they do is they try to create patents. And most of the patents actually come out of people who have master's degree, who may even have bachelor's degree. And what they do is they do some work, they create something which is new, which is a discovery and invention. And then they write it out in a few pages. And very often they give this document to a lawyer and the lawyer then rewrites this particular process or invention which they have created and they get a patent out of it. So this patent is then filed in that country and after some time they do get a patent. Now many companies will reward the person who is getting a patent with some monetary benefit. But what happens is that the intellectual property in the patent actually belongs to the company concerned. So most companies actually want to keep the intellectual property in the form of patents, whereas most universities try to publish the work out there in journals so that then it becomes available to the world at large. Now, this is a completely different way of looking at research. But if you see at most of the medical discoveries which are taking place nowadays, many of the drug molecules which are out there, these are all essentially relying on patents and most of these discoveries are actually taking place in corporations. So not only PhDs, but also many master's level people are often involved in these particular research endeavors. Now let us look at the second issue, which is the system engineering and design area. Now, if you go to any company, any national lab, you will find that a lot of work is done on system design. And at the end of the day, system design basically means that you craft out the design of a system. This may be in terms of PowerPoint slide. It may be the architecture. It may be blueprints if you are trying to manufacture something. And then whatever research you are doing, whatever intellectual property you are generating is actually captured in these PowerPoint presentations in that blueprint and so on. So you will find that people working in companies spend a huge amount of time on making PowerPoint slides. And through these PowerPoint slides, the different flow charts they make, the different system diagrams they make, they actually do a lot of research because once that particular system has been made out in PowerPoint in some detail, then what people can do is that they can go and actually fructify the system. They can make the real product. So these product could be something like drones. It could be something like submarines. It could be something like airplanes. It could be rockets and so on. So a variety of products are possible. You can even do system design for chips, for satellites, for railway engines and various products. Now let us come to number three issue, which is software. Now, in many cases, if you are actually not developing a hardware out of your work or research, then you are developing some software from it. And many of the companies are producing software out there. Many national labs are creating software to simulate the design of any system. They are creating digital twins and so on. And system design is essentially converted into software. So software can also be thought to be research. Now, if you are somebody who has done any class on numerical analysis or any numerical subject, you know, that there is a big difference between writing out some math and coding it in software. So something like Newton-Raphson method, it's very easy mathematically, but then 
you need to write a program to actually use this method so nowadays most of the algorithms which are out there most of the mathematical methods which are out there in computational mechanics in computational fluid dynamics you essentially have to write software to practify these particular concepts so i would say software is extremely important nowadays and a lot of research is actually going into the software systems now another aspect about software which is directly tied to math and research is looking into the convergence of the different algorithm concerned because whenever you are dealing with any nonlinear system you are dealing with any system where discretization is involved then you will need to do a lot of mathematics to figure out whether your algorithm and code is actually going to converge or not and also how quickly it is going to converge or not so of course you have many problems such as linear programming you can solve them using the simplex method but there may be faster methods to solve these problems so this is all research and these kind of research have to be demonstrated by software so what you need to do even if you write papers is that you have to take various test functions and then you have to show how the method is performing with these different test function now i have seen a lot of math being applied in domains such as in aircraft design for example in the design of wings so whether it is by airbus or by boeing or any country what happens is that the entire platform of the wing can be designed using optimization methods and using various computational mechanics and computational fluid dynamic software so again these are all research concept and i will tell you that most of this research is actually be done by people who have master's degrees and bachelor's degree sometimes there is a phd out there but it is not something which is mandatory like it is in the university setting finally i would say the last issue has to do math and with math what happens is that if you are somebody who is interested in doing pure math research you can do it in your home you only need a pencil and paper to do it and in fact there are some mathematicians who are doing math like that they may be in siberia they may be in some other part of the world and they may suddenly come up and prove some theorem which has been pending for a long time now of course in all these issues the problem sometimes comes up with how do you get the money to sustain your life so sometimes there are people who are teaching in some high school who may be teaching in college and they are doing the research on the side and these people again may not have a phd degree because you do not need to have a PhD degree to become a teacher in high school, to become a teacher in college, but still you can spend part of your time in trying to solve some old problem which is existing out there, some problem which is propounded by Ramanujan or by Fermat or any of these big people. And then if you are able to solve them, you can always write a paper and publish that and you will certainly get credit for that work. So this was my video today about can you do research without PhD and the answer is certainly yes but of course PhD will provide you with formal training which may help you to publish papers because it's sometimes difficult to publish papers unless you know the art of writing a paper because paper writing is itself an art. I'm going to put some videos on the end screen about writing papers which will help you in that particular journey if you are somebody who is able to create something, solve some ancient problem but need some guidance in writing papers.